Namaste, welcome. Thanks for joining me for self-care from the chair. Today we're going to do some general overall movement with my intention being to really kind of wring out tension and tightness and hydrate the tissues, so the connective tissue, which is also called fascia, and the muscles and the joints, and just bringing more hydration to the whole body because motion is lotion. So when we move, we hydrate the body. So you gotta drink your water and do some movement. So whether you are you know, uh, driving a desk and working, 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 or you just need some general movement, um, or maybe you're sedentary and um, this is a great way to get into a little more movement with ease, and it will just make you feel so much better. So you need a chair, and ideally a chair that does not have arms and something firm, not something that you sink down into. And as you might be able to see, I'm sitting with a blanket on my chair seat um, because uh, when I sit in this chair without the blanket, my hips are a little bit lower than my knees or are just about level. So depending on how long your legs are, you are going to want to prop your seat up or down, modify your chair uh, by adding um, some blankets. I will link uh, here on this video um, another video I did about how to sit while in a chair, and you can, you can look at that separately. So uh, create a support so that your hip sockets are a little bit higher than your knees. Uh, what that does is it allows the spine to be upright and not, if the knees are higher, we feel pulled back like this. And so that's gonna inhibit our movement. So we want to have a free range of movement. The other thing I'm doing is sitting to the front edge of my chair. I'm not sitting way back in my chair, right? So I've got some freedom of movement um, on the back of the legs, like the whole back of my legs is not on the chair. So the feet are on the floor, flat on the floor, and at least hip width apart. Let's begin by turning our palms up, sitting up tall at your greatest height, and we'll take the hands out to the sides with an in-breath, bringing the palms together, and as you exhale, draw them in toward the heart. Let your eyes gaze downward and just take a moment to connect with how you're doing in this moment, how you feel physically, emotionally, and your general mental state. Is the mind busy? Is it calm? Is it foggy, sleepy, alert, spacious? We're just taking a little snapshot and checking in. Good. Let's take a moment also to dwell in our heart. Just taking our awareness into the center of the chest area. You can feel your breath moving. And we're in this heart center filled with love and compassion and gratitude, or we can allow ourselves to be filled in this way. I like to come to the heart as I move into any kind of movement practice so that I'm, I'm moving with this sense of gentle self-care and gratitude that I have given myself this time to do the self-care. So let's uh, release the hands. We're going to place palms down uh, on the thighs, close to the knees, and we're going to start, gentle push with the hands, let your pelvis roll back, right? So as if you're trying to roll back and meet the chair back, except that's where the pelvis is going, but the chin is going to curl in, and the head is curling forward. Then, it's almost like I'm 
pulling on my knees with my fingers, I bring the pelvis back up right. You come up to a nice tall sitting posture and then let your pelvis roll forward as if you were going to bend forward to pick something up, but you're just letting the pelvis go and you're letting the head tip back, the heart area reaching forward and up. Stretch your chin up and then pushing with your hands, roll the pelvis back to this flexed position of the torso, curling the chin in. Push with your hands and let your shoulder blades spread apart. And then I'm kind of grabbing with my fingertips, as I said before, and letting the pelvis roll up right. The whole spine unfolds, it like unfurls, like a little uh, fiddlehead fern. And the pelvis tips forward, the chest moves forward and up, the chin reaches up. Pull your shoulder blades together in the back. Let's just do a couple of those. So kind of push with the hands, pelvis rolls back, I curl inward. Shoulder blades spread apart as you reach out for your knees. And then kind of grabbing the knees or you know just kind of pulling on the thighs, kind of gripping in. That's not really a, a big deal, but it, there's a hand score to have this little bit of this action of initiating this pelvic movement, tipping forward as the head tips back, the heart reaches forward and up. And you can connect this with your breath as you roll back, exhaling, curling in, and inhaling, unfolding and Tipping back in a back arc, extension, and exhaling into flexion. Inhaling to extension. Pull the shoulder blades towards each other. And exhale, flexion, spread the shoulder blades apart. And then we're gonna come upright we're going to continue this movement, but we're going to take our arms in front of us. So as if you had um, oars, right? We're going to pull straight back, bring the elbows straight back behind us. So your shoulder blades are coming together. Pelvis is tipping forward, heart coming forward, head tipping back. And just do what your neck is comfortable with. If you need to look straight ahead, that's fine. And then I'm reaching my hands forward, shoulder blades spreading apart, the pelvis tips back, the head curls in. Breathe in, pull the elbows back, tip the pelvis forward. And exhale, push the hands forward, shoulder blades spreading away from the spine, and we curl in. Breathing in to extension of the torso, exhaling to flexion. Just do a few of these back and forth with me. Good. And one more, and then we'll come back to neutral. and let the hands rest on the thighs. Just take a moment to notice how you feel after that movement. So now we're gonna move into a different plane. We're going to kind of tip over to the side, like you know, you're in a crowded theater and you wanna kind of see beyond that person in front of you and then over to this side, right? So I'm just side bending and I'm letting my ear Drop down towards the shoulder. Just normal breathing. Make sure that you're not holding your breath. Just breathing normally. Good. And as we get some of this side bending awakened, some of this movement through the side body, 
We can add the arm if you would like. So when I come back up, <clears throat> drop one hand down. Breathing in, I'm going to reach up, like there's something on a shelf up here I want to get to, and then curl to the side. And when you're ready to come back, reach with the hand and let your in-breath bring you back up, and the out-breath takes the arm down. If the breathing that I'm suggesting kind of makes you confused and you're not sure or it's not working for you, just let go of that and make sure that you're breathing. Make sure you're not holding the breath. That's the most important. So we'll breathe in and take the arm up, reaching, reaching, reaching up high, then curling over. Nice side bend, one side condensing to support, the other side opening up and spreading. And then an in-breath, I bring the arm up and my body up, and then exhale the arm down. Let's do a few of those. Inhaling arm up, exhaling curl to the side. You could pause here for a moment, or you could just keep moving. Breathing in, we come up, exhale the arm down. Other side, inhale the arm up, exhale into the side bend. And if you like to pause, you pause there. If you like to just keep moving, you keep moving. So you don't have to go directly with me. Um, make this your own practice based on what you're feeling in your body. Good. Let's just do one more to each side. And if you decided you wanted more time with a, one piece of what I'm doing, you could always pause the video and work with that a little longer and then start it back up again. Good. And we come back to neutral. Take a moment in the center just to notice how that feels. And again, we're going to switch to a different plane of movement, and that's this rotation movement in the what we might call the transverse or horizontal plane. So I'm just turning as if to look over to this side and then turning to look over there. And my hands are kind of supporting this movement. So one hand reaches out, the other one slides back toward the hip, and you turn. And I'm actually, we're going to pause here for a moment, I'm actually even letting the knees move a little bit. So <clears throat> one knee is sort of reaching out, the other knee is pulling back. That means that my pelvis is moving with this. And then as you slide one hand back towards your hip, it's like that whole leg is coming back a little bit. There's a little bit of movement in the pelvis so that the pelvis is part of the twisting action, right? Which is making my blanket kind of slide around a little bit, and that's okay. You might just have to readjust yourself. And I'm just getting some continuous motion here, being sure to exhale that I'm not holding the breath. And the only thing I want to say as we continue this is about the head. Notice if when you turn, if your chin goes up and your head tips back. If that's happening to you, then uh, keep your eyes gazing down like you're following a little semicircle around on the floor. And that will help you to keep your chin fairly neutral. I'm not bending my head down, I'm just kind of keeping it neutral over the spine. Good. Let's. Um, on the next turn, let's pause. And if it feels okay to cross your hand over to the opposite knee, and this hand I just have on my hip, you could put it down on the chair, edge of the chair. And we'll pause here and just breathe while we experience this rotation of the vertebral column. When we're in a twist, we can't really breathe deeply. So we just 
Make sure that we got a nice, soft, gentle breath flowing. Breathing in will bring us back to the front, and then we'll go over to the other side. And if it's okay to cross that hand over, it feels okay in your shoulders, you do it. Otherwise, you can just keep the hand on the knee on the same side. And while we experience being in this rotation, we also just allow a nice, soft breath. Chin is neutral. So check in, make sure your chin isn't up in the air. And then breathing in back to the front. Let's do another one of those where we rotate and we pause. We stay in that rotation. And we're wringing out the torso. So good for uh, the vertebral um, joints and the discs that are in between the vertebrae and all the ligaments, connective tissue, muscles that are creating this rotation. Breathing in, we come back. Exhale to the other side. And not only the bones and the joints, but our abdominal organs are getting some movement and a little ringing out. And our organs are doing all the work to keep us alive and healthy, so let's take care of them. And then breathing in, we come back to the front. Just pause for a moment to see how that feels. <clears throat> so just that little sequence there might be all you need. Take some little breaks throughout your day and do that. We're going to move down to our feet and travel up to the head. So uh, I'm going to extend one leg out. And you can see I was trying to keep my toes to the floor. You may not, you might find that that's a lot of stretch in the front of your ankle. Just do the best you can, reaching the toes down and then reach the toes up. So if you have shoes on, you should take your shoes off and try it. You can work in your socks is fine, but shoes are probably going to limit the movement of the feet. So I'm reaching out through the heel and then reaching with the toes. Heels, toes. Heels, toes. Point the heel, point the toes. I'm getting that ankle moving, moving. All right, let's just do one more. And we'll bring it back in, slide the other foot out. Really open up the front of the ankle, reach out with the toes. You can even try to spread them a bit. And then reach with the heel, bring the toes back to you. Toes to the floor, reach out with the heel. Toes to the floor, reach out with the heel. Let's do a few of those. Good. And then finish that up and slide the foot back in. Now we're going to look at another movement um, of the foot called supination and pronation, right? So this is, I am actually trying to keep this, my leg from wobbling a lot. And I just want to lift up the inner edge of the foot, keeping the outer edge down and then bring it back to neutral, and try to lift up the outer edge of the foot, right? So the little toe, the ball of the foot, and even the outer heel a little bit. You could think of this, let's keep switching back and forth. I'm saying lift up one side. You could also think of it as, while I lift my inner foot up, my outer foot is kind of scooping into the floor. And then we switch, scoop the inner foot into the floor, lift the outer foot up. Let's just do a few of those. Supinate, pronate. Supinate the foot, pronate the foot. So yes, the leg's going to move a little bit, but notice if you're doing more with your leg and less with your foot. All right, let's bring that foot back to neutral and do the other one. Supinate, pronate. Supinate, pronate. Supinate, pronate, scoop, 
scoop outward and let's see scoop inward scoop outward scoop inward scoop outward and let's come back to neutral all right let's see if you can lift your toes up can you wiggle your toes it's always a good test keep those toes alive keep the circulation down in there make sure those muscles can move those toes we're going to extend one leg out and reach the toes toward the ceiling and kind of combine the movements we just did by doing a circle. So I'm, I'm, we're kind of supinating and then pronating as we also point the toes toward the floor and toward the ceiling. So, and I have my heel on the floor. That's a little bit easier on the hip flexors here. You could do this up in the air if this isn't too difficult here for the, the thigh. All right, let's just do some circles in one direction and then we circle in the other direction and just noting that you can do this with your heel on the floor. Might be easier like if you had, um, if you had a sock on and the foot was sliding or you had a little towel there so the foot slides. I noticed my heel's kind of sticking to the floor. And then we bring the foot back in. Notice the difference between the two feet. Let's do the other side. So reach this foot out and make some circles. You can do those up in the air if you want. Good, and circle in the other direction. the foot back in. We're going to go back with our foot first leg, reach out, reach with the heel, and then as you press down with the foot that's still on the floor, press that heel down, lift this leg up. Bring it down and in. Reach the other leg out, reach with the heel, and pull, draw the leg up. This leg can help by pressing down. You can also help yourself stay upright by pressing into the chair seat or the sides of the chair, right? So what we don't want to happen is we lift the leg and we tip back, right? So we want to reach out, reach the heart forward and up. You can support with your hands if you'd like. Reach out with the heel and lift the leg. Press with the other heel, reach your heart forward and up. Stretching out and up. Let's do a couple on each side, a couple more. All right, this is the last round. Good. And then I'm going to press the left heel into the floor. Doesn't matter either side. Press one heel into the floor and bring the other leg up. See if you can clasp your hands around the shin or behind the thigh and just draw it up. Release it, press this heel down and bring the other leg. So I'm lifting the leg with its own power, with the hip, and then clasping the hands and really pulling it in. And release. So push with one heel, lift the other leg, clasp, in whatever way that works for you and pull that knee toward your chest. Press and lift. Press and lift. Press and lift. We'll do one more on each side. Press and lift. Press and lift. And then we we'll come back. Good. Just take a moment to notice how that feels. And check in, are you still sitting upright or have you rolled backwards, right? We wanna keep the pelvis upright, keep the front body and the back body very open. And from here, we'll drop the hands down by the sides. We're gonna do some shoulder circles. So squeeze your shoulder blades together and back Draw them up towards your ears, and then spread the shoulder blades apart. 
drawing your shoulders forward and down, squeezing them together in the back, up towards the ears, you're coming forward, your shoulder blades are spreading apart, and down. So just making these big circles. If this feels difficult, start with little circles. Just do some little ones and then let them get bigger. And breathe. If you just exhale, your inhale will take care of itself. Let's switch directions. So now I'm spreading the shoulder blades apart. Draw them up, shoulders up to the ears. Squeeze them together in the back and descend them. And again, you can start with little minis and get bigger. Mini circles into bigger circles. Listen to your body and what feels good for you right now. I'm not in your body, I have no idea. So that's up to you. Good, nice, delicious shoulder circles. Okay, one last hurrah here and then we'll let the hands drop. Let's breathe in and take the arms out to the sides. Are you sitting up tall? Right, not tipping back. Breathing in, exhale, take one arm on top. Notice which arm you took on top, right or left. You're hugging yourself. I love this, you get one hug today, at least. Always you can get one hug every day, at least, from yourself. So notice that I'm not wrapping my hands on top. One arm is underneath, going around to the side. The other one's on top, also coming to the side, not over the top. And I'm keeping the elbows up off the chest, right? And we're going to just do some little circles here. You can see that I'm really big into circles. So I'm just circling my torso around. Breathing. Let's change the direction of that circle. Excellent. And come back and open up the arms. Big in breath. We're going to go for a second hug. The other arm on top, right? So you have to know which arm was on top first. So you can take the other one on top. Now we got two hugs. How oh, awesome. Circling. These could be little mini circles if this feels really tight and you know, kind of surprising that there's uh, a lot of tight areas in the body. Let's we'll kind of check in with some of those. And just weaving around, change the direction of your circles whenever you want to. Good. And then we'll come back up right and open the arms up. Take a big in breath. And we'll drop them down. Good. So I'm just going to place the hands on the lap for this next thing. And we're going to do a little movement with the head and neck. Let's just start with bringing the chin inward. So I'm not dropping my head down like this. I'm just bringing my chin in as if I wanted to look at my chest and then slowly, gently lifting up. Reach your chin up and curl in and up. You like nodding your head yes in a big way. And on the last couple of one rounds here, when we go up, as I reach my chin up, then I'm going to open my mouth. So this moves this jaw joint here. And then you let it close as you curl the chin in and look up, open your mouth. The mouth gently closes, the jaw gently closes as you flex and opens as you extend. Good. Just kind of let that jaw move and get some freedom there. It's very, it's very closely connected to the joint where your skull is sitting on the very top of your spine. So we kind of loosen up all that tightness there. 
All right, last one. And now we're going to do, if that was nodding yes, now we're going to shake our head no, but super slow motion. And just like we did before when we were in our rotation, eyes are just tracing a little semicircle on the floor so that I keep my chin low. If you are turning your head and you notice at some point it gets pulled back like that, don't go that far. Just go, even if it's just like this, small little angle here. You want to get that movement with the chin low. You might hear a lot of cracking and creaking and popping. As long as you're not feeling any pain, it's okay. We're just getting things moving. Excellent. And then come back to the center. And now we're going to do the side movement. Right? So this is just tipping your ear to one side and to the other. I'm mostly keeping my rest of my torso just upright. It's like my head is a little metronome. Tick-tocking from side to side. Feel the sides of the neck stretching. You could pause. You could go to the side and just pause there for a moment. And come up and tip to the other side and pause. While you're pausing, you're breathing. And let's do one more on each side. Good. And then come up. So we, we did a lot of movement there from big movements of the torso and then from the feet all the way up to the hips and the shoulders and the head and the neck. So let's finish there. Turn the palms up. With an in-breath, we're going to take the hands out to the sides, breathing in, bring the palms together, bring the hands to the heart. Bow your head to the heart and take refuge in your heart. Give yourself a little moment of gratitude that you took this time to take care of yourself because that's really the most important thing. There's not much else we can do if we're dragging ourselves along everywhere. So to be in connection with others, to do the things that we want to do in the world, we need to take care of ourselves, refresh, and rejuvenate, and reconnect. So bow your head to your heart, softly open the eyes, release the hands. Namaste, and thank you for joining me today. I hope you come back for another class.